Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to go through a practice problem that explores the relationship between third degree price discrimination and price elasticity of demand. So in the question we're told that TownWise Leisure Centre successfully engages in third degree price discrimination. They sell two types of tickets, one adult type ticket and one pensioner type ticket. The pensioner type ticket is available to those who have a pensioner concession ID card. The marginal cost associated with entry to the centre is constant and equal to 2. The price elasticity of demand of the pensioner group is equal to negative 2.5. So here epsilon p is price elasticity of demand and superscript p that means it belongs to the pensioners and that's equal to negative 2.5. And the price elasticity of demand for those purchasing the adults ticket is negative 1.5. So that's epsilon P superscript A. We are asked what are the prices that the leisure center charges to each group? Now I will say in this question, the negative has been included when the price elasticity of demand has been reported and not everyone does this. Sometimes people just use the absolute value so they drop the negative. If you're only using the absolute value, that will only matter for us when I use a formula later on, but I'll let you know the alternative formula. It's a really easy substitute. All right, so in our question, we have two types of consumer. We have those buying the pensioner ticket, we'll just call them pensioners, and those buying the adult ticket, we'll just call them adults. And actually, in terms of elasticity, it will be the pensioners that are the more elastic group. Their elasticity is negative 2.5, which means that if we increase the price by 1%, then they reduce their demand by 2.5%. And that's a bigger response, a more elastic response compared to the adult group who would only decrease the quantity that they demand by 1.5%. So perhaps if we drew out the demand curves associated with each type of consumer, they would perhaps look something like this. The pensioner's demand will be more elastic, so it's flatter compared to the adult's demand curve. It's steeper, it's more inelastic. Now our firm, when they engage in third degree price discrimination, will essentially just act like a single price monopolist in each of these submarkets. So if I put in our marginal cost curve in, which in this case will just be a straight line, it'll be flat because it's constant. For each type of consumer, they will produce such that marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost, just like we have in the diagram here, and then read the price off demand. Now, just to be clear, to say that the elasticities of each of our types of consumers is, in this case, negative 2.5 and negative 1.5, that's just to say that at that profit maximizing level of production and price, the elasticities are equal to negative 2.5 and negative 1.5 respectively. And what we should find when we calculate the prices, as the diagram suggests, is that the profit maximizing price associated with the adults, the more inelastic group, will be bigger, it'll be larger than the price associated with the pensioner group, the more elastic group. So the price that we set for the more inelastic groups will be higher. This makes sense intuitively. A more inelastic consumer is less sensitive to price increases, so the firm essentially has more leeway to raise the price. Now, the relationship that we need to connect the prices to these elasticities is the one here in the top right hand corner. The marginal revenue of the firm can actually be restated in terms of we take the price, we multiply it by one plus one over our price elasticity of demand epsilon p. So I have done a video on this condition, I'll link to it in the description below, as well as links to any other videos that might help you with the various stuff in this question. Now this formula is correct when the negative is reported in the epsilon p, as I have in this question. Now, if you just have the absolute value, then this term in the middle here will be a negative. And that's really how they introduce the negative. They just change that positive to the negative. I'll leave it as a positive though, because I have included the negative uh, sign in my reporting of price elasticity of demand. All right, we're going to join this condition up with the other profit maximizing condition that I mentioned before. The firm will just set the price such that marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. And we should just lastly also note from our question that the marginal cost is equal to two for both groups. So I'll just put that in the diagram. All right, let's think about our pensioners first. I'm going to rewrite my profit maximizing condition. Marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost, but I'm going to 
just substitute that alternative formula in for marginal revenue. So I have price and I'll just use P subscript P, that's the price for the pensioners, uh, times one plus one over epsilon P superscript P, that's all equal to marginal cost. I'm then going to substitute in all the values from the question. So I put in our negative 2.5 for that epsilon P superscript P and marginal cost is equal to two. I can then take out the negative from that denominator in the fraction and I get in the parentheses one minus one over 2.5 and one over 2.5 is a little difficult to understand. So I'm just going to multiply both numerator and denominator by two and I get two over five, that's that equivalent fraction. Now in the parentheses, I have one minus two over five, which is actually equal to three over five. If you can't see it straight away, just note that the one can be rewritten as five over five. Five over five is equal to one. Then we have two fractions with the same denominator. We take the difference between the numerators, which is three, and we leave the denominator as is. So we get that price variable times three over five is equal to two. Solving for that price variable, we divide two by three over five, which is just to multiply two by five over three. So we get 10 over three, which is 3.33. And that's our pensioner's price. All right, how about our adults? We're just going to go through the same steps. We're going to use that marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost profit maximizing condition, but sub in that expression for marginal revenue, the price associated with the adults multiplied by one plus one over epsilon P for our adults is equal to the marginal cost. Substituting our values in, we get that price variable multiplied by one plus one over negative 1.5, and that's equal to two, that's our marginal cost. Taking that negative out again and multiplying and dividing by two, I get one minus two over three in that parentheses. Again, we can do the same trick that we did before. We can rewrite that one as three over three. Three minus two is one over three all multiplied by the price. And then it's easy just to multiply both sides by three and we get the price of the adult ticket at six. As suspected, the price associated with the less elastic market, the adults, is bigger, it's larger than the price associated with the more elastic market, the pension is. So that's it, that's how we find the prices when we're engaging in third degree price discrimination when we have information about the elasticity of demand. I hope that the video helped. Thank you so much for watching. If it did, please like and subscribe. Hope you guys are doing well. Have a good have a good one everyone.